Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jason Stark and I'm with my co-host Danielle here today to talk about the 2013 film Blind Detective. Yeah. yeah. Blind Detective, um, uh, we'll, we'll start off with a little bit of a uh, synopsis. Um, it's a film with uh, the main character Johnston, played by Andy Lau, um, who is a police detective that is visually impaired um, and is very good at solving crimes, but because of his ailment is probably lacking in certain things. And over the course of the film, he works with Ho, who is a very good police officer, but not necessarily a great detective. And um, they solve a bunch of cases usually indirectly over the course of the film uh but it's an interesting dynamic between them and it all culminates around their desire to find out what happened to uh Ho's friend when she was young a girl called Minnie um Danielle do you have any um insights into the film that you thought really stood out or really uh elevated the film or well, more importantly, what were your thoughts on the film? Uh, um, uh, I think the role playing the film uh, is not traditional in a hero sense. Like a uh, love drama. Yeah, it, it, it's a solid romantic comedy film um, that I found to be different from a lot of traditional like western like romantic comedies insofar as you have the film pretty much is a police drama yeah. um they're both police officers most of the film takes place about them being police officers and a lot of like the romance subplot is usually played for more comedic uh elements that gets in the way of them actually solving the crimes Mm -hmm. And because of that, like, dynamic, there is, um, there are moments of levity balanced out by, like, severely dark themes. And as we get into it, we'll probably go into more of a deep dive about aspects of the film and the important, like, elements that it kind of carries through with, um, one of the things I really like about this film, because I'm I, I really like this film, um, and I'm not I'm not really. I'll let you kind of explain how you feel about the film in a minute. But um, the things I really liked about the film was how you have Andy Lau, who comes across as a very like cool individual in all of his movies, whether it be Infernal Affairs, um, The Adventurers, a bunch of films like that he manages to always be like the cool guy and in this film there's a part about halfway through where they do a subversion of that um and it turns out that he's not as cool as he really thinks and i think that's a nice little moment in the film um the detective vision so when he's thinking about things how it goes into that um blue uh blue toned vision um and he kind of interacts with the characters that he's processing through i thought was a really effective use of that and it helps differentiate it from a lot of the traditional film like elements so it was a nice way to separate those out and the casting choices i think were very strong sammy chen is very very good in her role as a Officer Ho, she might be Detective Ho. I can't really, I don't, I don't think it's really sp specified over the course of the film. But I found that that was a really uh, well cast position. Um, do you have any thoughts that you'd like to share? Like maybe, what did you think of the film? Um, in so far as did you like it? What did you like about it? And then we might dive a bit more into plot. Yeah, I like it. I like the uh, movie style 
because the director also used many pictures to show the many uh, magnificent picture of Hong Kong city. The overall schedule of the film is complete and, and beautiful. Yeah, that, and that, that, also, oh, sorry. Uh, connected with a whole film that we were seeing attractive. Yeah, I thought there were a lot of like elements. So, um, especially with like a lot of the uh, areas, um, the film really only takes place um, in two areas. It's primarily um, her house uh, mm. and the outside of her house, and then um, a couple of restaurants around it are the main focuses. And then they go to Macau. Um, about a third of the way in the film but despite having very like mm -hmm. short uh sets like there, there isn't really a lot of sets over the course of the film uh each of them are distinctive and it really goes to kind of create like the sense of like it, it's a lived-in city one, one of the big problems with a lot of these films is when they try and do like a city and you only kind of get like certain elements that you're not really um aware of and it kind of makes it feel like this is the only thing that's happening um they go out of their way to make it feel like oh um despite the two main characters working on this one case mm -hmm. um it, it's a whole world and there are a variety of different like crimes and investigations taking place uh and there's a variety of characters that while aren't as uh prominent as uh johnston and ho are equally like important over the course of the film yes so now that we've sort of got at both uh, our views on like the film without really going into too many spoilers because mm. pe people get upset when you you go through the movie and tell them oh this beat by beat is what happens without letting them know that there's spoilers uh one of the things that we can do now is uh probably go through a more step-by-step -step analysis of the film um because the film starts off with uh johnston um right out of the gate they establish him as like a very serious and very good detective um by solving the uh sulfuric acid case uh and because of his ailment he isn't able to necessarily get like the reward that he is promised um so i felt right out of the gate um they really set johnston up as like okay here is this really good detective that just seems to have a bit of bad luck every now and then um and that's when they introduce uh ho as like the uh, i'm gonna say super cop where she's like athletically gifted and like she's a marksman and she can do all these things but it both like right out of the gate they establish here's johnston who is really good with the mental aspects of the detective work and then you have ho who is very good with the uh, physical requirements um and because of how good he is with the mental aspect she brings him in to uh kind of solve a case that had been standing like since she was a, like a child um there was a girl who went to a school that disappeared um and because she disappeared uh she's all but she's been scarred by this for like the rest of her life um and over the course of the film they go and they investigate this and there's many twists and turns along the way but the way it eventually gets to the end um and culminates in the plot where it turns out that minnie who was the friend is actually still alive and is um actually quite dangerous uh i thought it was a very nice subversion because they have certain plot points along the way that you kind of go oh i wasn't expecting them to take it this way do you have any thoughts about anything in the film sort of like that 
I, uh, why you like this film mostly? I like this film mainly because um, I think it's it's very fun, but mm-hmm. it's not afraid to um. To watch. Uh, well, so it's fun to watch, but like also the story, um, despite having like very serious moments, like there's they um. There's a, it's revealed at one point, um, they think that a serial killer killed Minnie mm-hmm. and, um, he's, he's really creepy. Um, like that, that entire segment, which r- realistically doesn't go for more than five minutes, um, is really disturbing. Um, but it's kind of balanced out on both sides with, um, real emotional scenes like that afterwards um after the scene with that that's where uh ho gets shot or stabbed and she's bleeding out in the car and it's really the first time that um johnston and ho have a real moment um which is the culmination of the film like that that's basically why we're why why you watch the film because it's a romantic comedy and they're two kind of different people with Johnston being very um mm-hmm. superficial because he keeps saying oh um ho looks like uh officer susan and officer susan um i'm not sure if they actually had a female actress for uh officer susan or if it was actually a man even to this day i'm not i'm not sure um i could probably look it up but it's um like they play elements off like that as like a joke and you kind of go oh but it's come right after this like deep scene um and the same thing happens with um like the revelation of mini mini is like at at that point you think mini's dead Mm -hmm. and like you think mini's dead for most of the movie but um, at the end, it's revealed, oh, actually, she's alive, but she's murdered her partner. And so you go, oh, like, that's, again, it's dark, but it's come right after this moment where they've, like, sort of united. Like, it's it's got, it balances both extremes of the emotional scale particularly well in a way that I haven't seen a lot of other films do. Mm, I, I see. <laughs> yeah, like, it's... I mean, I, I, I personally just really like Andy Lau. I think he is a really good actor, um, whether it be in films like Infernal Affairs 1 and 3, um, of which he, he is the star. Um, like, he, he's very, very good in those roles. But um, I think it was very nice that for once he kind of got to play the character that was sort of goofy because i haven't seen many roles where he embraces a more silly side not to say that he hasn't done it it's just i haven't seen him um but yeah i i I really enjoyed it um and i think it was a better because on, on the service that we watched it on they refer to it as a pure comedy they don't refer to it as a romantic comedy or anything like that. They review to it as purely a comedy. And while it isn't ve- like it isn't very ha ha funny um, at certain points, but it does have moments where you go like, "Oh, actually, that was pretty well done." And I, I, it got a chuckle out of me for like a prime example would be um, when uh, Setso, who is uh, Johnston's friend. Um, he uh the the girl that johnston likes throughout the entire film uh ding ding um is revealed to actually be in love with his best friend and his friend um like is throughout the film kind of portrayed as goofy and like a funny like sidekick but she sees him as like a dirty harry style officer I thought that was a really interesting um, dynamic that 
Mm. I, I wasn't expecting when I originally watched the film. Yeah, yeah. So good. Yeah. Mm. I see. Yeah. Um, was... Things brought me was the film's uh, success successfully changes people's dependence on traditional de uh, detective method of vision. Uh, the blind uh, detective does not rely on his eyes, but use his hearing, smell, intuition. The new perspective uh, enable the audience to experience the non-visual world more deeply and then have a new understanding of the surrounding environment. Uh, that's my uh, mostly like this film reason um, because it inspired me uh, sometimes it's fun hard, not just for the eyes. Um, yeah, no, yeah, no, that's that's a good mindset to have from it, a good takeaway. Um, yeah, like his portrayal of it, like how he solves the um, sulfuric acid case in the beginning, like he um, he can like smell the chemicals on the uh, guy. And he can tell that he's, like, not emotionally right. Like, by the way he talks and he kind of flies off the handle. And th those are the kind of the keys that he uses to deduce that the, this guy is going to do something bad. And it turns out he's right. Um, mm. And, yeah, he's, like, they, they are very good at finding ways for... Um, Johnston to orient himself in that world because um, another example would be when he woke up and he um, is in a house that he hasn't been in before and because he's blind he can't really find anything and he gets the um, ball in his pocket and rolls it to one end of the room and then rolls it to the other end of the room to kind of find out how big the space actually is. And I thought that was... Um, really interesting because that wasn't something that I would have thought of. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so overall, I think uh, it's been a pretty good film. Um, like, yeah, the there's about four plots in the film, the main one being um, the finding of Minnie and where Minnie has gone. Um, there's a... which leads into... Uh, the Bigfoot uh, lady plot where I'm not really sure what it is that that woman's accused of doing, but they play it up a couple of times that he's like trying to catch her and she's got like a $1 million bounty on her. So it must be something pretty serious. Um, and uh, then it's primarily into like the serial killer plot um, with the uh, romance subplot with his best friend kind of being the fourth one. Overall, I think it's a pretty well-rounded film. Um, I'd recommend it. Um, would you recommend it? Yeah, I would recommend it. Uh, but I think some people uh, will not affect this because uh, I think the only reason was this film's a little bit uh, creepy. <laughs> oh, yeah, it definitely has elements where it's a bit... Um... I think it's one of new style of Hong Kong film. Uh, the earlier um, the New York Times film uh, critic once comments on the early Hong Kong Kung Fu film, and everything is overdone and it's all madness. Perhaps uh, uh, this sentence at that time was not complement to Hong Kong 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 film, but now it seems like um, or, um, origin creative on content in works of the insolence and indulgence in early Hong Kong films. And well, I th oh, sorry, continue on. I believe many view just um, uh, audience will like the blend detective because it's the madness. However, perhaps this uh, persistently because it's gone too far that to for that some uh, audience may not accept it. Well, to that to that point, um, like there's there's other films that I'm probably gonna recommend that we watch at some point going forward. Um, 
and some of them probably will be a little more action oriented. Um, for example, I'm I'm a big advocate of uh, the film Brotherhood of Blades Two. Mm-hmm. Brotherhood of Blades Two is a bit more um, intense in t- in terms of its action and the reactions through that. But um, compared to like Brotherhood of Blades One, I found the pacing in Brotherhood of Blades One a bit slower. So that, that there's sort of a trade off where. Um, like this, this film was about two hours and five minutes, and it f- didn't ever feel like it was going particularly long, in my opinion. Um, I could definitely see how someone might maybe find that there were certain areas where, like, some of the jokes or that might drag a little bit. Um, I didn't find that, but I could see uh, someone maybe having that opinion. Um, for example, there's been films such as uh, like Motorway. Motorway is a, another traditionally uh, Hong Kong film, and um, it's 90 minutes, and it's a quick 90 minutes. Um, from the beginning of the film to the end of the film, you just jump through a lot of things, and in many cases I could see how someone might find that pacing a little difficult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, for, um, but overall, the film, I think this is fine. I will rec- recommend uh, recommend to our uh, audience, and I will see it again. And I think the uh, director reflects the current facts and uh, in our in our lifestyle. Um, I think it's good. Yeah, no, that's it's good. Um, well, I think that I think that's all from us today. Um, so, if you like this or you have any films you would like to recommend, put them in the comments section and we'll look into them. Um, I can't guarantee that we'll watch all of them, um, but uh, yeah, um, I'm Jason Stark. You're Danielle, um, and this is the Fearless Media Project. Uh, see you next time. See you.